What's going on everyone? Welcome to today's video. In this one, I'll be taking a look at Shin Megami Tensei 5 Vengeance. What do I think of the game? Does it improve on the original game? What are some of the most impactful improvements to the overall experience? I'll be going over all that and more in this video, so be sure to hang around until the end because there is one aspect of this new release that may deter fans of the original game from jumping in for another go with Vengeance. Before I jump in, I want to thank Atlas for providing a code for Shin Megami Tensei 5 Vengeance. Much appreciated, and with all that said, let's jump right into it. I'm going to kick things off with my thoughts on the original SMT5 because I realize I really haven't done that thoroughly on this channel in general. It's been on a few of my lists. You know I enjoy it. I put a ton of time into it. SMT5 was heavily criticized at launch though for its lack of storytelling. And while I think that the original story was really good and fit well with the pacing of the game, I definitely could see room for improvement. SMT5 places you in the shoes of a high school student in modern Tokyo who, after a series of mysterious events, finds themselves in a post-apocalyptic version of that city. Here, you merge with a mysterious being, a powerful entity capable of battling the demons that roam this world. The narrative delves deep into themes of complete chaos, the nature of humanity, and the struggle for survival in a godless world. The story is engaging and thought-provoking, filled with twists and moral dilemmas that kept me invested from start to finish. Personally, I really enjoy the setting as well, but when Vengeance was announced, I was super excited to see them expand on this story and make it more engaging with new characters and what seems like an all new story experience. The gameplay in Shin Megami Tensei 5 is where the game has always truly shined though. The combat system remains turn based but introduces new strategic elements such as the press turn system where exploiting enemy weaknesses grants that extra turn. The game also places a strong emphasis on demon negotiation and fusion which has always been my favorite aspect of SMT games. Recruiting demons onto your team and merging them to create more powerful allies is both incredibly addictive and absolutely essential for your progression. I often found myself with a notebook tracking the different fusions and demon abilities I preferred to have in my party. If you allow yourself to get drawn into this mechanic, then this can easily become the main draw and the entire motivation pushing you forward. I think that is what the original release relied heavily on, but it didn't quite work for everyone because as a fan of stories and JRPGs myself, I can relate to those that criticize the original release for its lack of emphasis in this department. Exploration in the original game is another highlight. The open world segments were vast and filled with secrets and side quests, and formidable enemies. Navigating this dangerous landscape requires careful planning and resource management, adding a layer of depth to the overall experience. The game is tough, and to be honest, is one of the toughest turn-based JRPGs I can remember playing in recent memory. SMT5 requires you to think on your feet, plan carefully, and use the resources you have at your disposal to take down tougher enemies. Vengeance doesn't really change that core gameplay loop here, and I'm very thankful for that because I think if the original excelled at anything, then it was this, but the quality of life fixes and the new story elements that were added made an already incredible game even more fun and engaging. Vengeance does improve the game in a multitude of ways, so I'll get into a few of my personal favorites here now. First, for me personally, it's better performance on the new platforms. I mean, look, the Switch is getting up there in age for sure, and things just aren't looking great on this console right now. I've been playing on PC and being able to play at higher resolution and frame rate just, it's been incredible. The game's art style really shines at those higher resolutions. This unfortunately does not apply to the Switch version, as you will have the same performance you had with the original release with Vengeance, and all of the minor performance issues I had with frame rate, etc., carry over into this release as well, unfortunately. One of these days, we will get the next Switch system and maybe some backwards compatibility. We'll have some of these games looking and running a lot better, but for now, I would definitely recommend getting Vengeance on PC or PS5 as it performs really, really great. The art style, like I said before, it's just really amazing at better resolutions and that uncapped frame rate makes running through these open areas just so, so much smoother. I mean, the performance top to bottom is just a huge upgrade in my opinion. Now, if you prefer that portability and have a Steam Deck by chance, I can also confirm it runs significantly better there than on the Switch as well. So for me, the Switch is probably my least favorite platform to play this game on, but if that's the only option you got, it's certainly playable there and is still a great game that 
every fan of JRPGs probably should at least give a shot. My favorite new feature though has to be the new story content. At the beginning of the game, you can choose to play the original SMT5 story or play through the new content, and I would strongly recommend just jumping straight into the new story in Vengeance, even if you never played the original, because it is just better. I won't really spoil anything here, but the story is much more fleshed out, and the pacing of the overall experience is heavily approved. I only have one knock on it, which I will get into a bit later in this video, but the path of Vengeance is definitely the way to go. The new story introduces new characters, and the main one we've seen in most of the marketing leading up to the release of this game is Yoko, and I think she's absolutely great. As a character, she's very straightforward, and I like what she adds to the overall experience. There's also new demons, which lead to some very challenging new boss fights. There's a lot of new content to love here, and this does feel like more than a definitive edition with a couple of new bells and whistles. They really overhauled the story, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. Next up, you can now save anywhere, anytime. Look, I know there were plenty of save points scattered across the map, and saving wasn't all that bad in the original release, but it was also on Switch, so just putting my system to sleep and picking it back up later was how I played the game most of the time, so I was never too worried about the saving situation. But now that the game is on other platforms, that may not be the case for you, and when exploring the open areas in this game, you can get a bit lost at times. It's just nice to be able to save when you want, where you want, I personally don't think this new feature takes away from the difficulty, and while some people may disagree, I think it's a nice option for you if you're someone who would like to use it. Another interesting new feature is access via the Leyline Fountains, and it's called Demon Haunts. This allows you to talk to the different demons in your arsenal, and at times they will give you items. I think this is a cool idea in theory, but it's just not all that fleshed out. This seems like something that was kind of just thrown in there. It's an interesting idea, and I did find it nice when I got a cool, useful new item, but also as the game progressed, I found it a bit of a chore to go through and talk to the different demons over and over again, hoping for a chance to get something cool. And most of the time, it didn't really add anything significantly new to the story. I'm glad it's there and it does serve a purpose, but overall, it's just not really my favorite feature. There's quite a few other features and quality of life improvements in Vengeance, but those were the most notable ones for me. Now, I want to get into one downside of this new release. I've been a fan of Shin Megami Tensei for a long, long time, and I absolutely love SMT5. I put a ton of hours into the game at release and was excited to do it all over again with Vengeance. But personally, as someone who loves replaying games that I enjoyed, replaying this one was a bit of a mixed experience. One of my big issues with the original release is just how long it takes for things to really, really get going. The game throws you into a desert right at the jump and very little story or character or world building is done at the early stage. And to be honest, that's still the case here. Yes, there's a couple of extra scenes and a new enemy or two, but overall the experience is still very similar. Actually, my least favorite part of the original game were those opening hours. I felt at low level they were a bit too grindy and pacing wasn't really as well done as the middle and later stages of the game. And the first opening area being a large desert meant the setting wasn't all that appealing either. You spend a good 10 or 15 hours or so at the beginning of the game roaming through this large desert if you don't rush through it. And so those opening hours to those who have already played the game can be off-putting. And I think it would have been nice to have seen those opening segments refined a bit more. In my opinion, it's worth getting through though, because once the new story really starts picking up, it's very, very good and makes for arguably one of the all-time best Shin Megami Tensei stories full stop. It takes some work to get there, but it's worth it in the end, I promise. I love the new characters introduced and the new storyline makes for a much more engaging experience through to the end. If you loved the original game, then you should very much enjoy this one. And if you were put off by the lack of story and character development, then give this one a go because I believe it's significantly better in just about every way. That packaged up with all the quality of life fixes make this the definitive SMT5 experience and one any fan of the series just absolutely shouldn't miss. Anyway, everyone, that's it for my thoughts on Shin Megami Tensei 5 Vengeance. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions about the game, let me know in the comments below. If you've been playing the game, I'd be really interested to hear what you guys think of it. That's it for me in this one, though. So until next time, I'm out.